Welcome back, Admin Mastermind and Teach Better Family. It was wonderful to see such phenomenal administrators. And man, we had rich conversations again. Jeff, I'm going to kind of throw it your way to set set the stage because what was funny was we kind of had, and this was not intentional by any means, but we had some overlap <laughs> between the morning and the afternoon session of kind of very similar stories and just trying to work through kind of some situations with some other leaders on the campus. And I'd love for you just to kind of share, maybe starting with the, the morning session of kind of what were the needs and, and how we collaborated um, within that. Yeah. Yeah. It was right? interesting that they, they both cause so often, like, uh, especially when like, cause these were two meetings, like, you know, we didn't have to prompt any conversation. So sometimes nope. those of you that have been to meetings, but maybe some of you that haven't, uh, you know, typically Josh and I will have a prompt. Um, sometimes it's fun and playful. Other times it's very yeah. serious to ask questions to kind of get conversations going. The last couple of weeks, we have not needed that because people have, have had things. And I love that. And I said it last, I think yesterday morning I said it, is that that's what we want this space to continue to be. is a place where administrators can come and feel confident and comfortable yes. and sharing uh, the good, the bad, the mm -hmm. ugly, anything like that, mm -hmm. and get help. And we've done that. So yesterday's morning meeting was pretty much primarily all around the entire session was around uh, one of our members dealing with a, a situation of uh, this member is a principal and has two assistant principals, which is new to them. Mm -hmm. um, they've never had that sort of support and have like the three person dynamic and stuff. And so there was, um, they were struggling with a few different things. One was just the idea of sort of letting go. Yeah. Right. And not be in the only face and um, while also wanting to mentor the two assistant principals and give them opportunity and grow them and just sort of work through that. So we can touch on that a little bit. Uh, and then the other one was that one of them was very experienced and really, really efficient and really, really great. The other one was awesome, great attitude, always eager to learn, takes great uh, um, critical feedback like that, but not as experienced and a little slower to pick up on things, get things done, and has made some mistakes. And so they were asking the group about how do you sort of manage a lot of that, right? How do you manage the sort of the FOMO of not being there and giving up things and letting go of the reins? And, you know, one of the things that they mentioned was the when you're teaching someone something to take over for you, you have this thought of like, I could do this four times in the amount of time it's taken me to do it once for to sure. show them. And then also the how do you deal with someone who has the right attitude, but like it's just struggling. And get them there. So, um, I'm interested to hear your thoughts. Some of the things, places we got as a group were, uh, you know, one of the other members mentioned, who also happens to have be a, a, a one of two APs on a team, is they do what they refer to as weekly rhythm meetings. Meaning, it's a meeting that is meant to get us all on the same page, all on the same yep. rhythm, uh, where they have a running agenda on a doc that they just go to every week so that everyone and anyone can drop in thoughts and things that they need to discuss. And they have checklists in there and stuff like that, which Josh, I was telling the group is very similar to how we do a lot of stuff when we have our leadership meetings and sure. we do our ownership meetings. When you and I do our weekly meetings, when Ray and I do a project meetings, all that type of stuff, we have these running agendas so that it's organized. And we know, oh, if I have something I need to cover with Josh that doesn't have to happen today, yeah. I can go add it to our agenda because now I've taken action and it's out of my head. And I know Josh and I will cover it next week. And so that was a really cool one. And it's just the transparency, I think. And um, one of the quotes, and I'm going to let you speak for a second, that came out of that we kind of got to was that you need to empower the people that you're trying to grow to make decisions, but also to make mistakes. They have to feel empowered and able to make a mistake and know that while it might suck in the moment that they made the mistake, it's going to be something that's going to grow them because that's how you're going to see it too. So um, as someone who was on a big, big, big district, uh, big campus, a uh, large team with a lot of students and a lot of things to manage, and you actually in the, eight, the assistant principal role, what are your thoughts on that sort of both angles, right? The having as the principal letting go a little bit yep. and you getting the opportunity as an AP, but also as the, how do you work with, someone who who has the right attitude but not necessarily the skill set yet yeah for sure so first off like as a principal you definitely need to delegate because if you don't you're taking everything on yourself and you're going to get burnt out very very quickly uh yes it may take you less time but it starts to stack up where your time is completely full uh, but the other thing is is like 
I, I remember our HR director saying like, you know, for us as leaders, like the folks that you're pouring into, the folks that you're building, it is not you're building them for your campus. You're building them for the district. These are people that are going to get promoted eventually. And so for a principal, your job is not to keep your APs on your staff for the remainder of their career. Like, <laughs> yeah, some people do stay in that job for a really long time. And uh, maybe that is where they retire. But typically you're, you're trying to build them to become a principal. And then that principal is hopefully being built to be someone that goes into a director role and maybe a superintendent. Like mm -hmm. typically it's, it's not just a, a linear pathway for those folks. And so, you know, as a principal, you, you're not only delegating for your own mental health and that burnout component, but you're also doing it to help them grow. And as we yeah. know, you know, when you don't have that experience, when you don't have that knowledge prior to, it's your first time doing it the likelihood of failure is probably pretty high. And, and if it's not failure, at least maybe making small mistakes. And so yeah. it doesn't matter if you're a first year, third year, or six year uh, AP, uh, if it's a new experience and something that's being delegated to you, um, you're, you're only going to learn through the opportunity. And so we, we need to present that. And, you know, I know like as an AP, we had, you know, principal competencies that we had to go through as APs and uh, you literally had to check off. Did I do this? Right master mm -hmm. schedule or i mean there's a whole host of different things that you know uh having conferences with teachers and teacher assessment and there's there's just a whole litany of things that ap's need to accomplish and be exemplary in to show the district to say we've we've done all of this i am prepared and ready to move on into the principalship and so uh i think anyone that's listening in, in regards to if you're you are that principal you're building leader you do need to feed that in it doesn't matter if it's an ap if it's a counselor if it's a instructional coach a dean of students like you need to be providing opportunities even if it feels weird to delegate it they need the opportunities so that they can grow uh within their profession and it's sort of this um, something that I used to um, uh, an old mentor of mine who was uh, a manager of mine when I was in a different level, different management role in a different industry. He's always say is is trust but verify. Yep. Like give them the trust, make sure they understand that you know that you trust them, but verify. It's not checking up on, it's not micromanaging, it's just verifying that everything's good because that gives you an opportunity to one hopefully catch mistakes or issues if there are any, but also even more so hopefully if there aren't any mistakes or aren't any corrections to make it's an opportunity for you to get it and congratulate and to celebrate mm -hmm. and to note and to share that to which is all part of of growing them um yeah. and, and i think you, you sort of touched along the line of that one of the things that we talked about when it came to the you know one thing that this person specifically said was what if like someone comes to the a parent or there's an event or something something happens and people think i should have been there but i'm not because i was trusting them to manage it then i went home which by the way is like, that's what we don't want people to have. Right. Is the, I have to be there all the time. I don't get yeah. home with my family. Right. And, and, and that's what we the right thing to do. I, I, I think, hope she does go home. <laughs> yeah, I think this got through to them. Um, and that was the fact that like, you need to your staff, your mm -hmm. colleagues, your team members, both all the way up above you and anyone who you're managing, as well as your students and your community, everyone, they need to understand that you and your entire leadership team at that building level and district level of your district, like you are all equal in the sense of you don't need to be there. Someone needs to be there. Right. right. So it doesn't matter who. And I think we get tied up in titles and stuff, but that shouldn't be the thing. It should be like, I'm not here. It's okay because Josh is here because yep. so-and-so is here. And I think that that folds into, if you're building them correctly, you get an opportunity, you're trusting yep. them. That all folds into that. Um, and you know, I, I struggled a lot when, when the first time I started trying to delegate tasks and do things because I was just like, oh my God, I can do this so <laughs> many times in the amount of time that's going to yeah. take me to teach them this. And then they would do it the first time and be like, oh, I did it okay, but I could have done it faster or better or whatever. Okay. But then as you go and go, like there's several things on the team now that I no longer do that. I'm like, thank God I don't have to do that anymore. Yep. Um, and like, that's, that's huge. It allows you to then focus on other things. And so definitely make sure you do that, um, and delegate it's tough, but trust me, it's worth it. Give them the oh, opportunity, gotcha. give them the opportunity to make mistakes, give them the opportunity to, to learn and grow. And it's going to be better all around. Uh, the, the other piece that, so in the evening session, Josh, if I can flip it for us now, very similar, as you said, but it was slightly mm -hmm. with a little slight twist. And that was 
This was a, a principal dealing with an assistant principal. Also has two assistant principals, just worked out this way. One yeah. who's just a freaking rock star. Or, or was it three assistant principals? Did I? I think it was three, actually. It was three. It's a big yeah. campus, yeah. The big uh, campus. Two that were rock stars, killing it. They were younger, newer, but just doing awesome. And the third, who had been in this position in multiple buildings in their district several times, have been there for a long time, much, uh, uh, I don't say much older, but older, close to retirement, da da da. Um, and not a great attitude, not necessarily like a negative attitude, but a very laissez nice far. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good way to put it, right? <laughs> um, you know, and just not like in making some mistakes and have having a history of making some pretty big mistakes. Yeah. And not seeming to care that the mistakes were made or that other mm -hmm. people had to fix it. And I think the struggle that this person was having was that she didn't want to micromanage him. She didn't want to because she knows what it's like, what it feels like to be micromanaged. And one of the things that I kept trying to drill in, and I think we got there, was the fact that like, for people who don't need micromanaging, micromanaging feels bad. Yeah. Right? If you're a self-starter, if you're motivated and you're pretty good at that, and you're being micromanaged even when you're doing a great job, like that's where that, you need to trust but verify you don't need to micromanage, right? So, and, and it gets that way. But people who don't have that drive, or don't seem to care about it, they might, one, they might need it just in general, but also a lot of times right. they, they want it, they like it, they appreciate it. They don't see it as micromanaging. They see it as, thanks for reminding me to do that. Thanks for making sure I got that done. Thanks for checking in. And we talked about like finding the balance between that, right? Because obviously that can become a lot of work, but if you could find the balance between and making sure that you're still not going in and doing the work for them, but that you're checking in and that you're giving them the support that they need, Yep. And uh, before we got on, I was talking about like, you know, how we say all the time to teachers, like, hey, your job's to teach the, te the students that are in your classroom, not the students that you wish were in your classroom. It's Correct. the same thing when you're managing it, people and leading people is that your job's to manage the people that you got, not the people that you wish you have. And sometimes you Correct. have people that need a little bit more. So you have to adjust your your manage, uh, management style. And one thing we talked about, and then I wanted you to ch chime in here because I feel like I'm talking a lot in this episode. I apologize to everyone. And one of the things we talked about was like, having those other two that were doing great and need that growth and were just like wanting that growth and those opportunities, have them help with some of that management because it's an opportunity for them to work with other, someone else and um, to lead and to delegate and, and to follow up on and that trust and verify and stuff. So look for that opportunity there and stuff as well. So Josh, I assume in your career, you've never had anyone who <laughs> wasn't amazing and didn't have a great attitude and awesome efficiency, right? I wish that was the truth, Jeff. <laughs> I really do. No, I, but I do think, I mean, it kind of goes back to what I was talking about with that HR director. And, you know, they always talk about like, you know, the reality of things is that you really need some, some very large mistakes to be made to have someone dismissed or non-renewed either as a teacher mm -hmm. and even harder as an administrator. Yeah. Let's sure. just be honest. So what they were trying to say is like, you need to get to the, the core of the motivation of that person, you know, building yeah. that relationship and, and really tapping in, you know, as we uncovered, there were some other things going on in this person's life that were pretty traumatic. Right. And, mm -hmm. you know, for an administrator knowing this, you know, and getting this background information, you know, what can you do to support and, and provide resources uh, to potentially get them in a better space mentally yeah. uh, to, to be the best version as an administrator. And, um, there's a lot of components, right? Every person's different, every experience. And, you know, it's, it's hard to even get at the core of, of what's really truly a problem. But I mean, it's similar to our students, right? Language is a behavior. If they're mm -hmm. acting out in some way, uh, then, you know, what are we doing to uncover so that we can, you know, like I said, get to the, the bottom of the root of the problem to, to make sure that we're fixing that and to make them, mm -hmm. you know, motivated and be the, the best version of that. In addition, we also, you know, reminded you need a document because there were some yes. other things going on in regards to making mistakes that made a ripple in regards to how other leaders were perceived by the superintendent, by directors, by other people, uh, families, um, students. It had a negative perception based on a, a pretty large mistake. Um, so you also need to protect yourself. And by doing that is recording, um, you know, through email and, and actually having notes and things like that, just in case something was to occur uh, that you're not getting pulled under with that mistake and, and it being perceived by others that you are part of 
uh, of that decision making. And so uh, I think there's definitely a, a clerical piece to it um, in regards to like HR and making sure that you're having your documentation. But I think the, the biggest thing is just, you know, that, that relationship, trying to understand what's going on. And then also like as a team, just taking, and this is the delegation piece, right? If, we're, if we are having to micromanage, it shouldn't just be all on the principal. It shouldn't just be on one AP. It should just, as a team, understand, hey, this person's going through a rough time. This person's not carrying their weight. What can we do as a group um, to make sure that we're putting things in place to make sure that we're reminding, micromanaging, or it may feel like that. Maybe. And then also, you know, potentially taking on more responsibility as a group as this season is occurring. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and I think I want to wrap up with highlighting and sort of, sort of adding whatever my 22 cents to your thing where you said about finding the root motivation of someone. In my experience, one of the coolest feelings as someone who gets the opportunity to lead others is when you have someone that's struggling, whether it's with attitude or skills or whatever it might be, and you find the thing that clicks, it's like, it's, I assume I, I don't know because I've never been in a classroom, but I hear teachers talk about that light bulb moment with students. It's yep. how I interpret that. There's a similar thing. It's not the same. It's similar. When you find that thing that actually motivates you, you're like, oh my gosh, I just completely changed the way that person operates, completely changed the way that our team and the efficiency of our team, because I was able to dig in to your point, find the, build a relationship, not give up on them, not judge them, but be wary, set boundaries, get things in place to take care of it, and then keep digging to figure out what needs to change to help them get where they need to be. Like That's a really awesome feeling. Um, not to mention it's also just positive all around for the team too. So oh uh, really great sessions. We're loving, loving our weekly sessions right now. Uh, they are every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Eastern time in the morning and then 7 p.m. Eastern time on the, in the evenings. If you go to teachbetter.com slash mastermind, you can sign up for free. That'll get you the Zoom link, which is free every week. You do not have to come to the meetings. You can just sign up, which will also get you into our free uh, Facebook group where you can be there for if you either can't come to the meetings or in between the meetings. These recaps go in there. Resources that are shared go in there. You can always jump in there to ask questions or share value or anything like that. So appreciate you, Josh. Appreciate, appreciate you. all watching and listening and all that stuff too. We'll see you next week. Yeah. And don't forget, read books, just like Jeff's shirt says. Yeah, read, read books, read books. I did, <laughs> I did it backwards. It's like this way. You like that? 